Tonight on CTV, one organization on campus seeks wages for graduate workers, and dialing 911 in Larimer County may see a huge technological upgrade. Then, a large expo held on campus encourages students to get more involved in the community, and hear about how Horsetooth's Six Film Festival brought in filmmakers from all over. All that and more on CTV, starting right now. Good evening, Rams. I'm JJ McKinney. And I'm Adam Carlson. Thank you for joining us tonight. A Fort Collins man who has been arrested for possession of child pornography is awaiting extradition back into Larimer County. Fort Collins resident Darrell Renneker was connected to a transmission of child pornography by police earlier last year. Fort Collins Police Services detectives conducted an investigation and received a warrant for Renneker's home, where they found multiple devices containing sexually explicit images involving children. During the investigation, Renneker left the state and a warrant was issued for his arrest. He was taken into custody in Minnesota last month and was charged with sexual exploitation of a child, a Class 4 felony. A wanted subject sustained serious injuries after a vehicle pursuit ended in a crash. The Larimer County Sheriff's Office attempted to halt a minivan on East Mulberry Street on September 14th. The wanted man, whose name has not been released, sped away toward Northwest Frontage Road. From there, deputies used a precision immobilization technique to stop the vehicle. The minivan rolled over and the man was taken into custody and transported to a local hospital. Further information on the man's conditions or charges has not yet been released. The latest update is that the critical incident response team took over the investigation. In an event straight out of the movie Sully, a plane crashed into Horsetooth Reservoir last Sunday. Now investigators are asking for photos of the crash as they try to get into the bottom of this flight gone out of control. Two people suffered minor injuries as the small plane they were flying came barreling out of the sky. The plane crashed in the Sawmill Trail area west of, west of Horse Tooth Reservoir in the evening. The two passengers were taken to the hospital. Now the National Transportation Safety Board and Federal Aviation Administration are investigating the, with help from the Sheriff's Office. Police are asking for anyone who saw the crash and who has any photos or videos of the incident to submit them to the Larimer County Sheriff's Office Evidence Submission Portal. It's just a sneeze and a cough away from flu season, starting up. The flu may arrive early in Fort Collins this year. Decreased exposure to the flu during the COVID-19 pandemic makes health officials believe immunity is lower. Due to the removal of the mask mandate last spring, this could introduce a high influx of cases coming late October. Flu season started a month early in the Southern Hemisphere in countries like Australia, and cases peaked months ahead than usual. This leads health officials to predict a similar pattern here. UC Health Senior Medical Director Dr. Michelle Barron encourages residents of Larimer County to get flu shots at their earliest convenience. Yeah, I mean, the flu just coming and always going, making people sick, it's just, ew, it's just disgusting. Yeah, yeah believe it or not, like most people, I actually don't like getting sick, so uh, maybe I'll just have to get that shot. I mean, well, I actually do like getting sick, but you know, but it's, that's just me. To each their own. Do you think so? One of the worst crimes in Larimer County history is resurfacing. The double homicide of 24-year-old Rosemary Mata and her younger sister, 21-year-old Julia Mata de Los Santos, shocked Fort Collins. The sisters were found beaten to death on the side of the road in Buckhorn Canyon during the early hours of April 29, 1978. Santos Romero Jr. was charged with the murders of the two sisters and is currently serving two life sentences. Romero has confessed to the crimes under hypnosis, but still admits that he is an innocent man. The now 68-year-old may have a chance to prove his innocence. Three undisclosed items are headed for DNA testing and should be complete by November 8th. After four decades, Fort Collins may finally see an end to one of the darkest cases our little town has ever seen. Students across CSU may have seen flyers posted all around campus throughout the weeks, and they all seem to be calling for one thing, for outrageous for the graduate workers of Colorado State University. These flyers posted all over CSU hotspots belong to one group, 
the Graduate Workers Organizing Cooperative, or GWAC for short. GWAC was formed as a response to work conditions that graduate students on campus are put through by CSU. Now, GWAC members and supporters Kate Weimer and Alexis Reiner say the workers have had enough. For someone making, for example, the minimum stipend and on a nine-month appointment, they would pay 15% of their income back to CSU in fees, like paying to work. And we just, we don't think that's fair. Weimer talks about the experience of graduate students in Fort Collins and why GWAC is so important now for them more than ever. Like CSU kind of needs to put their money where their mouth is as far as um, claiming to value diversity, equity, and inclusion. But I think like a big part of that is just compensating workers fairly. Otherwise, you might be hiring marginalized workers only to uh, overwork and underpay them. As a graduate student and new GWAC member, Reiner talks about the shock that she felt when seeing how she and her peers were treated. I was really looking for a union, which I didn't think existed, and I walked out of class one day and saw the poster, and I was like, this is amazing, because our, our fellow GAs had just been talking about how unfair it was that our first half of our paycheck was taken for fees, how we didn't even get paid for several weeks after we had been working. I think some students don't necessarily feel as respected by their professors or the people they're working with as they could. Now a member of GWAC, Reiner has found solidarity with other students supporting the cause. It was really cool to kind of share a bit about what we were going through and also learn about the other departments. With wages lower than the cost of living in Fort Collins, GWAC hopes to change the status quo and give workers the rights they deserve. I'm actually looking for a way to engage people in a meaningful way to solve s systemic challenges, and we can't do that until we organize and come together. <laughs> Gawk hopes to spread their message of workers' rights for all graduate students with demonstrations and unions in the near future. We reached out to the CSU Graduate School's communications for a response, where they stated, We are looking at improving compensation for all employee groups, and are committed to providing competitive stipends and benefit packages to our graduate assistants. Giving as much information to first responders as possible is essential for resident safety. That's right, and we're here to tell you more about how this may get easier. It's Kate Sherman. Kate? Thanks, JJ. The way, the way we make 911 calls is changing. Laramere County residents will now have the ability to live stream the situation off their phones and directly to first responders. This will help first responders be prepared for any situation. The first responders of Laramere County have implemented a new way to take emergency calls. When calling emergency services, they can now send you a link that allows locals to live stream the situation as it's happening. This new technology has already been used at a fire in Laramere County and also to locate a hiker stuck in the rocks on a mountain. All the dispatcher had to do was send the caller a link that would then live stream the situation to the first responders in real time. Residents are already excited. They actually think it will be a help for the community. First responders will know what they're walking into. They can possibly send mental health if that's what's needed. And they'll know what type of police response will be needed to get the situation under control. First responders will now be more prepared to handle the situations they're walking into. It sets up our first responders for success in situations that may be more intense than they are prepared for. The ability to stream can also help relieve the nerves of a caller in an emergency situation and of the dispatcher trying to figure out how to handle the situation. I like that. Like if there's a fire, then you can see like... Fort Collins residents are happy to see that Laramere County is putting in the work for the safety of our community. I'm excited to see how this will change the way we make 911 calls. I'm impressed by this technology and can't wait to see the way it changes how we communicate with first responders. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kate. With that, Rams, we're going to take a short break from the news. After the break, Marm and Dozarena will fill you in on everything you need to know about the weather for the rest of the week. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break, Rams. School pride may increase with news that CSU continues to rank high among public universities. According to U.S. News and World Report, Colorado State ranks as the 72nd best public university. Not only that, but the institution also ranked number 25 on the A-plus schools with B-plus students list 
the highest recognition for any school in Colorado. CSU's interim president, Rick Miranda, said in response, we're especially pleased that CSU is recognized as a place that returns great value to our students. The school continues to move up the chain, which raises the question, where could CSU rank next year? This CSU student housing concept has the potential to be one of the nicest dorms on campus, according to Housing and Dining Services. But now, it's an unpaved parking lot. Meridian Village is a dorm project here at CSU that was designed to offer a unique learning community that other dorms do not provide. However, the project has been on pause and is currently available as a parking lot. Meridian Village was initially put on pause in March of 2020 when the campus went all remote because of COVID-19. And we've kept it on pause since then because of uncertainty with enrollment projections for the university. I don't want to build more beds than we need, and I want to make sure that we have enough beds um, for what our needs are. So we're, as we're waiting to kind of figure out what's going to happen as a result of COVID, we've continued to put the project on pause as we're gathering new enrollment projections. The future of the project is unsure. However, the decision to continue the project will be made soon. We need to make a decision for our design build team no later than March of 2023. So I've contracted an external firm to help us put together a new master plan to look at the demand for housing, what's happening off campus, what they're seeing as trends. All of that information will come together to help us decide what's next. And if it is a Meridian Village like we'd planned or a modification of that or something completely different, but we will hopefully know that by the spring. Tamir Seinpal is currently placed in the Best Western and gives his opinion on the matter. I think if they do build it into a dorm, that would be better because it's a lot closer to campus. A lot of people don't have bikes and they have to walk to classes. And um, even though the hotel is nice, the fact that it's far makes it like a problem. Yeah, so I like to see that they like build that up. I, I like the I like the hotel, like I said, um, but it is a little bit frustrating knowing that we could have lived a lot closer to the campus, and um, instead they just turned into a parking lot, um, and they didn't uh, they just put us into a hotel, and it seems like a lot of the staff at the hotel didn't really like us. It would be better for the hotel staff and for us if we were living closer to campus and living in that uh, Meridian dorm. So. Until housing and dining gets the approval to build Meridian Village, students can enjoy the extra parking spaces. While news on Meridian Village may be unfortunate for CSU students, Fort Collins residents are in better luck. As summer comes to a close and the days get colder, citizens all around Fort Collins are going to need a safe place for them and their loved ones to stay safe and warm. Now, a local church and multiple charities may have an answer to their prayers. The Fort Collins Planning and Zoning Committee has approved a development plan for Hartside Hills 82 affordable housing units on land owned by the Heart of the Rockies Church. The plans include several multifamily and single family dwellings that will address key housing issues in Fort Collins. Hartside Church planned this affordable housing with collaborations from several charities including Hare Housing and the Fort Collins Habitat for Humanity, among many more. The church's housing has an emphasis on people that are in the area that are only making 60% of the median area income or lower. If you've passed through the plaza the last week, you've probably noticed how busy it's been. From club signups to fun activities, there was a ton for students to explore. Our live reporter, Abby Flores, joins us in the studio with more. Abby? Thanks, guys. The CSU Plaza has been a social scene this month. Just last week, the Slice Office hosted its annual Involvement Expo, an event for those looking to be more involved and engaged with the Fort Collins community. Hold on, hold on. From learning a new language to medieval wheel spinning, the CSU Involvement Expo had a display for just about every club and organization you could think of. Hosted by the Slice Office, this two-day event was a great chance for students to get a scope of campus life and resources. Slice, I mean, we could nerd out about involvement, so there's definitely rates that show if you are quite involved um, on campus, off campus, you have your sense of community, you feel like you belong, your persistence in college is, is, is evidently there. And so you have a much higher rate of graduating, you have a much higher rate of being satisfied of your university once you're an alum maybe even giving back or finding a way whether that's like funding but more importantly like 
contributing, just having a presence with the university. And sure, new experiences may be intimidating, but joining groups such as the CSU Ambassadors team can encourage both community and bringing students together from all over. I think it's super, super beneficial for underclassmen, for upperclassmen to kind of see what CSU offers. We are the admissions ambassador team, and we're basically kind of the, the face of the university. Um, our job is to bring a bunch of prospective students in from high school. And of course, we can't forget about some other unique gems that shined in this expo, such as the Medieval Society of Rams Keep, a club for students interested in reenacting medieval history. When you're in college, you gotta take some time to have fun. Like you're stuck in classes, you're trying to find jobs, you're suffering through student debt, and you're eating ramen like every meal. So when you're not doing that, having a chance to just run around, goof off with some friends, accidentally learn some history, I think it's just fun for anyone. There's a lot of different modes you can do to get involved. And truly, like, coming into Slice, I think, is a great way to start. There were so many different clubs tabling this time around. I can't wait to see what this looks like next year. Back to you guys. Thanks, Abby. Today, you may have noticed another larger crowd in the Lori Student Center. That's because today is Journalism Day hosted by CSU every year to introduce concepts of journalism to students. Speakers from all across the state share their expertise in topics, ranged from how to write for a TV broadcast to photography that works. There was something for many styles of journalism. Students took away a wide variety of knowledge that will aid them through their journalistic journey this year. Events like Journalism Day are an inspiration to many students and help journalism remain a stable and growing field. One field that sometimes sees a lot of similarities to journalism is filmmaking. That's right. Our feature reporter, Zoe Heyman, joins us live in the studio to discuss another big event celebrating film. Zoe. Thanks, guys. The Horsetooth International Film Festival, also known as HIF, took place this past weekend, and filmmakers from all over joined together to appreciate each other's art. My name is Jesse Dinder. I am the co-founder and executive director of the Horse Tooth International Film Festival, which has this year rebranded to Horse Tooth Fest because we're going with a more South by Southwest vibe. The reason that this festival is so popular and Fort Collins wants it, that Northern Colorado wants it, is because we need it. There is something here that's growing, and it's a good way to highlight some of the work we've been doing all year with filmmakers and artists from all around this Colorado area. We're one of 75 domes in the United States, and one of three in the state. So we have this access to something that we've never had access to before. So with that being said, that opening night is like techie, it's weird, it's something not everybody's even seen, and it gives you a reason to wear something nice. We got this thing that we have every year that we can fly, that we did this year, where you can fly around on a rocket ship and kind of get information. You gather points that you get and take away from you for like a satellite sort of thing. It's fun. And uh, we're just trying to do things that are different. You can't just go to a theater and just enjoy a film. We also want you to enjoy an overstimulation. One of the things that makes us different and why it sticks out is that we try to focus on filmmaker experience, focus on artist experience, make sure that they're enjoying the festival, making sure that they feel like this thing is theirs as well. And that's what makes us kind of stand out. That's why we do what we do. Getting to see the local talent at Horsetooth International Film Festival was an experience worth remembering. Back to you guys. Thanks, Zoe. Well, Rams, that's all the news we have for you tonight. But stick around. Leah Kakowski is up next to close out tonight, talking about a very exciting volleyball match happening right now. This here on CTV.